channel and welcome to today's video. So today we're here to check in for the third week of January and we're basically just going to look at what we've spent so far for the month and compare that to our budget. So I mentioned this in last week's video and I'm going to mention it again. For some reason this month has been tough on us. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is but we have just all been kind of in like this mood and we've been spending more than we normally do. We're usually really good at like sticking to our budget and being conscious of what we're spending and not going a ton over budget but this month just has been insane. So I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate especially if you're like brand new to budgeting and you're trying to get on track. Those are always like the first couple of months are always really hard when you're just starting out but I wanted to just reassure you that even <laughs> Even when you get over that hump of starting new, you still have months like that where, you know, you can't anticipate everything and, you know, you just go overboard in certain categories. That's just life. So it's okay. I'm telling you, it is okay. So anyway, we're going to take a look at the third week, see how we're doing so far. Um, I can tell you already, I did something that I've never done before. I don't think I've ever done before. I actually went through and did the check-in off camera. And the reason why I did that is because we had a lot of cap a lot of transactions that I for some reason never recorded like earlier last week. And so I didn't want to get confused and miss anything. So I'm like, you know what, let me just do this. I feel like it'll be easier to explain stuff without doing the physically like physical writing, but we'll go into it. The other highlight for this week, because I do like to talk about like the things that we're being successful in and the things that we're struggling with and things we're looking forward to during this video and I wanted to mention that we are in the process of trying to get pre-approved for another mortgage so we have no idea what we're doing I, I say this all the time but we have no idea what we're doing housewise we just know that like we need to make some type of change and we're not sure about like state if we're gonna stay here we don't know about towns but we kind of figured that before we get into like physically selling our house and all of that, that we should probably see like what we're working with, what being self-employed means for getting pre-approved because we did buy our house over four years ago. And when we did that, I had my salary and I think it's a lot easier to get pre-approved when you have a salary, like when you're an employee. And so I wanted to just sit down with someone, get an idea of like, is it even possible at this point to be able to get a mortgage now that I'm self-employed? I know that like with time and with lots of solid tax returns and stuff like that, that it would be easier, but I did just start doing this full time in June. And so I just wanted to get an idea. So I did have that meeting like maybe an hour ago and I'm happy to say that everything's looking good. We do need our 2020 tax return complete before we can get like an official pre-approval, but all of the requirements that the person that I spoke with mentioned, we will be able to provide and it should be good. So, so far so good. I did mention this last week that one of the things that I personally was looking forward to was the fact that like we're gonna get started on exploring other houses and towns and states and all of that. Again, no idea what we're doing right now, but that is one step forward you know closer to our end goal so that is good so i wanted to just mention that in this video just so you guys know kind of where we're at a little update because you guys might see like expenses related to certain things you may see you know if we're going to drive somewhere or whatever you may see that coming up soon so anyway i just wanted to mention that but let's go ahead and get into the check-in see how we're doing and try and make adjustments so we can stay on track when it comes to our budget Okay guys, so as I mentioned in the last clip, I did go through already and check and see what we spent, what we have remaining for all of our categories. So I'm just gonna go through this. I'm not gonna go back to the monthly view. We'll kind of just discuss what we found. One nice thing about filming it or doing it off camera is that I know that I'm not making any uh, mathematic, um, any like errors so that's one upside of doing it that way so this week we spent 176.99 on groceries i think a lot of that has to do with like small trips to get different things we also um i think jason got some stuff from like costco so that always adds up so for the last week of january we have a total of 28 dollars 64 for groceries so we're for sure going to be over on groceries we 
typically will spend like 125 a week on a like you know, an average week. As you can tell, one nice thing again about having the weekly check-in is you can see how much we've spent every single week so far. And we did spend 130 the first week, 164, and then 176. So it's been on the really higher end. Again, I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. I think it's just like when you stock up with stuff, like certain things just adds up. So we have $28. We will be over budget when it comes to groceries. For eating out, we spent a total of $41.17. This is a lot less than normal, but I think that's because we ate at home a lot more this week. And something that's kind of confusing, and again, another reason why I wanted to do it off camera, was last week we were negative by $14.55. We spent $41.17, and now I'm showing a positive number here, $28.51. And that's because I used our cash back from our Discover credit card, and I applied that to eating out because I knew that we already were over budget, and I wanted to kind of you know, give us a little bit more room there. So right now we have $28.51 remaining for eating out for the rest of the month. Um, I don't always do this. I honestly try to leave that cash back as like extra income, just, you know, extra. I don't, you know, give it to us for eating out or anything like that. But because this month was just, has been terrible, I'm like, you know what? We're gonna give ourselves, you know, this extra. I think it was like $80 or something. So that's why this looks a little goofy, but that's what I did. I applied it towards that. Um, one nice thing about budgeting is that you can kind of do things that work for you, and that just worked for us this month. I don't, again, I don't think that I'll do it again. I'm hoping we never have a bad month like this again, but um, I just figured I'd mention kind of what we did. We also picked up some more stuff in terms of household, so we needed like AA batteries and, I think we got some toothpaste, just a bunch of random stuff, which ended up being $43.66. We are now over budget when it comes to household by $96.71. So that is significant. That's a lot of money. And we only budgeted $100 for the month, so that's almost double what we budgeted. Again, I think a lot of it just has to do with timing when we pick stuff up. Um, I know we have like a ton of laundry soap because the last time Jason went to Costco he picked up like a huge um a huge thing of laundry detergent so we won't have to buy that for a long time but it does mean that like whatever that costs it could have been lower if we didn't buy it now again a lot of these things depends on timing when you purchase like big or like large quantities of something sometimes doing that is better if you kind of wait until if there's some room in the budget for it but that's just the nature of when one person goes shopping over, you know, both of them going shopping together. Anyway, that is what we're dealing with. In terms of gas for our cars, we spent $20.19. Now we have remaining $87.20. So we are significantly under budget when it comes to gas for our cars. I'm not sure what Jason's car is at right now, but I know my car will need to be filled up. So that will be another like $20 there. So we could potentially be under budget when it comes to gas for our cars. And that could apply towards the grocery overage or towards the household overage. Regardless, we're still going to be over budget. Um, the other item here is unbudgeted. So I don't budget anything for unbudgeted, but I do keep a line item in my budget for it because I'm realistic. I know that things come up and I think the entire amount here that you see has to do with medical stuff. So in February, I'm going to put together a medical sinking fund. It's going to be like the amount that I think it's going to be a, the amount that we spent in 2020 for medical, which I think was like under $500. And I'm just gonna divide that by 12 and that's what I'm gonna put in. In the past, I tried to use like our out of pack, pocket maximum. And then I didn't like having that much money set aside, like just sitting there, just waiting. I didn't like that. So I'm gonna do it this way and hopefully it'll consume some of these, you know, unbudgeted medical items. Now, a big chunk of this, I'm hoping to get reimbursed. I submitted all the forms. I'm just kind of waiting, and I am I actually was supposed to log in and just see if there's anything online for me, but um, I'm hoping that within January or maybe even like early February, we'll get 
a big chunk of this back. So that is where we're at in terms of like variable expenses. Nothing really has changed with our fixed expenses. We do also have sinking funds. So I figured I'd show you guys kind of what's going on with our sinking funds. I don't think there's been a ton of um, stuff going on there, but might as well just get into it. So one thing that happened is we renewed our Costco membership. That's $60 a year. And so I know it seems ridiculous, but I put aside $5 a month so that when we owe the 60, we have it. And so that just happened to be this month. Actually, our Costco membership does not like renew until March, but they send it early, so we pay it early. So um, you're gonna see right now we have $0 in Costco and then in February, we'll put another $5 in and we'll make it work. Okay, so I think I mentioned all of the stuff with Macy's birthday. We rented a movie, chat books, membership. Um, I also forgot to record, I think, yeah, it was a Target. We got Macy like a little pinata from Target, so that was $8.50, and I had that receipt in my wallet, totally forgot to um, pay for it. So not a ton has been going on when it comes to our sinking funds, which is good. I've been eyeing some new boots. I actually ruined my like nice, like gray, I don't know, gray tan looking like booties a couple months ago. And I've been eyeing some from Tom's. So I may potentially be using some of my clothes budget to pick up some new boots. But again, I've been eyeing them. They're a little bit higher than what I want to spend for boots. So I'm, I've been putting it off, but we'll see. We'll see what we do. Um, the other thing I want to mention is cell phones. I don't know if I mentioned in any of my videos that we pay Jason's mom. So, um, she started this new thing where the cell phone bills are actually $40 per person per month. So now our cell phone bills are going to be $80 instead of the 50, which is what we've been doing for like years, I feel like. So now we'll have to pay $80, and um, I did pay her all the way up until April, but starting in May, I'm going to have a cell phone, there, or cell phone fixed um, expense in my budget. I'm not gonna do the sinking funds anymore because it just makes sense to like just send her a check every single month instead of putting money into sinking funds and then taking it out, like I just, it makes more sense to me doing the sinking funds the old way and now that I'm going to be paying her every single month it makes it easier for me to do that because then I don't have to worry about like oh you know why haven't we paid her in a while it just makes it easier to pay her every single month but that's going to start in May because again I did pay prepay all the way up until April. So that is one thing. So I should make myself some notes, like get a sticky note or something. Then in February, we're going to be adding medical. And then in um, February, we're also going to be getting rid of the cell phone sinking fund. So there's always changes when it comes to budget. That's completely fine. My 2021 budget and my 2021 sinking funds are going to be off now because of those changes, but that's okay. Like things happen. There's always changes. You create these budgets like at one point in time. So just keep in mind that it's completely okay if things change. But I figured I would quickly mention those a couple of things to you guys because those will be things that you'll see that are different. Um, so anyway, let me know how you guys did for the third week of January. Are you guys on track? Do you feel like you've been doing really well this month? Or are you struggling like us and just really looking forward to a fresh start in February? Again, when I say that, we're doing everything possible to stay on track. But yeah, it's been rough. So let me know how you guys are doing and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.